All right, everyone, we're going to go ahead and get started. So hello on Facebook as well, however you're joining us here today. Um, welcome to our virtual reception as we welcome renowned artist Anita Yan Wong. You know, I've had the pleasure of working with Anita on numerous occasions now, and I can honestly say that her talent and work, not only as an artist, but also as an educator and an advocate um, for women, which is very much represented in this in this solo exhibition is truly something to be admired and that I have come to admire greatly. Um, and so I hope you have your morning or afternoon coffee in your hand as we discuss Anita's new show, Coffee Portraits, which is on display um, in Iyama. Let me double check here till March till March 27th. Yes, there we go. So without further ado, I will hand things over to Anita. So hi, Anita. Thank you so much. Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for having me here today. And welcome, everybody. Uh, so I guess I will go ahead and share my screen so we can start the presentation. Okay, <clears throat> so uh, before I start, I want to give a special thank you to International Art Museum of America for hosting this exhibition. I also want to give a special thank you to Katrina. <laughs> so without you, it won't happen. So thank you so much for everything. Uh, today's presentation is focused on my uh, coffee portrait paintings. Uh, so you know my name already, Anita Yan Wong. I'm an Asian American woman artist. So I would describe my work as contemporary traditional. I'm interested in both uh, traditional work and contemporary work. So uh, before I become a full-time artist, I have been teaching as an art professor for about 15 years. So the last school I taught at was uh, in San Francisco, UC Berkeley. I also taught at SVA in New York, um, Maryland Institute College of Art and Temple University. Uh, so the style that I do is called Ling Nan style. So Ling Nan style started, if you don't know, I will just briefly introduce. Uh, it started in the late 19th century. Uh, it's a fusion of modern Chinese, Japanese, and Western art, especially impressionist uh, painter. So here's uh, some of my coffee portrait. So uh, you might ask, how did I think of the idea? It really starts with the morning coffee. So I had a lot of leftover coffee, and one day I was drinking it, I accidentally poured it on the table, and I thought, ooh. It actually looks beautiful. As an artist, I love the uh, happy little accident that happens in every day's life. So I look at the power of coffee on my desk and I thought, what can I do with it? It's so pretty. So I started using coffee, ink and calligraphy brush uh, in my painting. As you can see on this picture, uh, I begin by pouring some coffee onto the paper. It's kind of like finding image in a cloud. So I look at this um, poured coffee on the paper and I imagine, you know, what, what can happen? Uh, how can I apply my ink and brush? So as I mentioned earlier, the style that I use in these uh, coffee portrait is Ling Nan style. So it's definitely a mix of Western art and uh, Japanese and Chinese art. So using this traditional Ling Nan style that happened in the early 19th century to paint modern faces, that's kind of like a, a layer of meaning I wanted to add to this painting because the traditional art is looking into our eye, asking, you know, what story uh, has it captured? 
Yeah, because these days, you know, one thing as an art educator, I try to promote traditional art to、uh, students, and I realize, you know, not everybody want to hold a brush anymore. A lot of students they are on their device, they want to hold a mouse instead. So I try to, you know,、uh, have some creative idea that might inspire more young people to practice traditional art again,、uh, such as this one. So one thing that I added to the art show is QR code.、Uh, I believe the painting process is、uh, as important as the final product. So each painting comes with a QR code. When you are actually at the art show, you can use your cell phone to scan it, and it will bring you to a movie, and it will show you how I made each portrait. Um, so as I said, the coffee pouring is as important to me as the final painting. So each painting does come with this QR code. So here is,、uh, you know, after you scan the QR code, here is one of the movies. So、uh, let's take a look. Before we move on to the next project, I want to mention in the video. If you're a painter, you probably find some techniques that you're familiar with,、uh, such as wet on wet.、Uh, so I really love the wet on wet used a lot in Lingnan and the mineral effect that melts、uh, all the ink and coffee together. It's actually kind of hard for me to predict each ending result. Because like what I said earlier, a lot of it is like finding image in the cloud. I'm finding image in the coffee、uh, on the paper, so it's very wet. It actually、uh, takes about maybe five minutes to dry. Yeah. So、um, 
moving on, uh, these are some of my current work. Uh, I want to create a book, uh, maybe this year or next year, early next year. It's going to be called uh, Ink Portraits. So in this uh, painting series, I'm not using coffee. And you can find some of these paintings at the art show as well. Um, so just pure ink and calligraphy brush. I want to keep it simple because I think beauty uh, can be simple. It doesn't have to be complicated. Again, you find some little happy accidents, some of the ink drip on the paper and definitely more of a minimalist style. Here's another painting at the art show. Uh, so as an artist, I love the imperfection and happy little accidents that brings life and beauty to the painting. So the meaning behind uh, she, that's the title of the series. Um, she cannot be defined by a flower. She cannot be defined by a red lipstick or the color pink. She might make mistakes, but she also made marks in her life. She's more than a magazine cover could ever contain. She's more. Imperfection is beauty. Madness is genius. It's better to be absolutely ridiculous than absolutely boring. This one is by uh, Marilyn Monroe. So here's another painting uh, at the art exhibition. Uh, it's actually quite a good size. Uh, it's kind of hard to see it on Zoom here. And on the right, you can see my other painting in my uh, working progress in my art studio. There's more here. Uh, I like to keep it like simple, but a little bit abstract. Uh, on the painting as well. Culture and gender has no color. Neither can we or one be defined by color. My name is Anita Yan Wong. You can follow me on Instagram at Anita Yan Wong. Uh, my website is anitayanwong.com. So please keep in touch. Thank you so much. so much Nita. so i want to open um want to open the floor now to the um to a q a if you have any questions or comments uh for us regarding the show or for anita um we love uh, we'd love to hear from you so go ahead the floor is open anybody um feel free to unmute or however you would like to communicate you can also use the chat. We are monitoring it on Facebook as well. So Anita, one thing to start um, to start it off. I'm curious. I see. Um, so on each painting, there's a symbol. Um, I think it's represent. I think it's represented in kind of each work that you do. Um, can you, can you see more about that? Where does... Uh, so that's a really interesting question, first of all. Uh, I think right now as an artist, I do believe I have a personal style now. So there's a couple of techniques that I definitely include in every single painting. Uh, so instead of signing my name on the painting, you can, you know, by looking at it, you can recognize it's my work. So a couple of things that I do, like what you mentioned, is um, drip ink that I also taught at, at my UC Berkeley class. That's like one, one thing that I love doing because I, I realize it adds light to the painting. So I started learning uh, Linglan style Chinese painting from a famous painter when I was six years old. 
Um, so one thing that she taught me is, you know, by the end of your bird painting, you have to add a little white dot in the eye, uh, in the bird's eye to add soul to the bird. So for me to drip ink on my painting, it's kind of like a way for me to bring the dragon out, bring the life out of the painting. So that's one signature that I do. That's yeah. The other thing, that's yeah. That's yeah. The other thing that I like to do is to use uh, just a couple calligraphy brush. As you can see in, in there, I probably only use two, one big one that allows me to be a little bit more abstract. And I like to be in control, but at the same time, out of control, you know. Um, yeah, so I hope I answered your question. Yeah, no, that makes it clear now. Uh, let's see, Danny. when did you start to use, utilize such a technique? Yeah, uh, that is another very good question. Uh, so the coffee technique uh, started about, uh, I believe, a year and a half, a year ago. Uh, the Lingnan style technique, like what I said just now, I started when I was five. So I'm from Hong Kong. I, I lived in London for a long time before moving here. So uh, I lived here for about 20 years now. So definitely a lot of style, a lot of fusion all combined in one. Uh, so the Western technique, I was really inspired by the impressionist, uh, the stroke of the Ling Nan, you know, the Chinese brush stroke. I compared it to the impressionist stroke because each one, Impressionist and Ling Nan style, you can obviously see the stroke. By looking at the stroke, I almost feel like I can see the artist painting. That's why in this art show, I wanted to record you know, the painting process. You can see how I created it, each uh, stroke. So uh, the technique, uh, I can't even answer like when did I come up with the technique because it's all, it's kind of like, a, the reflection of my life, you know, what I experienced, each location, each artist uh, or people that I met in my life, they all influenced my technique. So, yeah, it's not really traditional, it's not really modern, it's kind of like a contemporary traditional uh, technique. So again, I hope I answered your question. Thank you for the question. Yes, thank you so much, Danny. Mm -hmm. Anyone drinking coffee right now? <laughs> I <laughs> so one thing that I do want to mention is each time I create a coffee portrait, uh, I am sipping my coffee using the leftover coffee. Oh, someone is having coffee this morning. I see it on the chat. Yeah, so, uh, you know, when you actually look at a painting, you might even be able to smell a little bit of coffee. While I paint, I'm smelling, you know, really gorgeous coffee smell. Absolutely. Um, I definitely, I definitely encourage you guys to um, come and experience Anita's show for yourself. Um, she mentioned the QR codes makes it very fun and interactive. You get a real firsthand look of um, more in depth of her technique with each painting and how these come and how these came to life and came to be. Um, so that is a really fascinating aspect of the show that I hope you get to experience for yourself. Um, again, it is on view Adiyama until oh, March 27th. Uh, Danny, another question here. What is the portrait longevity in being made with coffee as opposed to let's say water painting? That's an interesting question. Yeah, a very interesting question. So uh, coffee painting is actually not a new thing. Uh, a lot of painters have used coffee as uh, almost like a mineral. You know, we say coffee thing and actually lasts for a long time. And um, the other material besides ink, uh, I sometimes add some uh, mineral. A lot of minerals are actually from nature. For instance, uh, we will grind a little stone into blue or into brown. So uh, I actually uh, feel really confident about organic painting material. Yeah. Lovely. Yeah, that's, um, that's a very unique kind of evolution from traditional ink you know the ink and wash paintings so that was um you know that's one thing i took took away from the work and was really um again you know another fascinating part 
All right, well, everyone, thank you again so much for joining us here today. Um, we hope to see you at Anita's show. I want to give um, a huge thank you to Anita as well um, for um, allowing us to display her wonderful, beautiful work. Um, you can find out more about Yama and Anita um, in the um, chat section or in the um, info section above in the description. All right, guys, thank you so much. I hope you, you enjoyed so the rest of your day and we will hopefully see you at our next virtual event. All right, guys. Thank, thank you. you, Katrina. Thank you so much, everyone. Yeah. The International Art Museum of America, located at 1025 Market Street, sits in the heart of downtown San Francisco between 6th and 7th Street. The aim of our nonprofit museum is to display artwork from disparate cultures to promote peace and harmony among peoples. Visitors will enter a serene garden with full rock formations, a tropical landscape, and a waterfall flowing into ponds. Our gallery houses traditional and contemporary ink and wash Chinese paintings, abstract oil paintings, and hyper-realistic ink paintings of animals and figures. Approximately 60% of our collection are paintings and sculptures by the contemporary artist H. H. Dorje, Shang Buddha III. The gallery also houses European and Western oil paintings beginning from the 17th century to present day including works by French realist Rosa Bournet, the Norwegian Impressionist Fritz Thalo, and the French Fauvist Maurice Lamnique. Iyama offers a beautiful environment as well as two rotating exhibition spaces. Admission is now free. Here in our gift shop, we have something for everyone, whether you are local, just visiting, or shopping for yourself. We have many products based on Iyama's artwork, as well as international and Bay Area themed items. We do our best to have a consistent flow of new and exciting products so that you can always find something special to take home from your visit to Iyama. <music>